Hi everyone, it's Miss Abby and I'm here to show you how to design a 3D printable bookmark in Tinkercad. So we're going to start by heading to tinkercad.com in your browser. I'll put a link in the description where you can just search for it on whichever search engine you like. Once you are there, if you don't already have a Tinkercad account, go ahead and take this time to create one. If you have ever been in a class at the library, I will put that class code up on the screen right now. If you aren't sure if you have a class co code login, go ahead and send us a message on Facebook and I can get back to you with your username. If you used your email to sign up previously, go ahead and use the forgot password link on the Tinkercad website. While you all make your accounts, I'm going to go ahead and share a little bit about what CAD is. CAD stands for Computer Aided Design and it refers to any manufacturing process that is controlled by a computer. 3D printing is one type of CAD process. Tinkercad is a free browser-based software and it's developed by AutoCAD and it's great for students and beginners and really for anyone, it is surprisingly powerful. Um, it's simple, it has a lot of different features. Today we're gonna be using the basic 3D designing function. There's a link in the description that contains the bookmark blank that I created earlier in Adobe Illustrator. You're gonna learn how to personalize your bookmark with that. Go ahead, download that STL file now and pay attention to the file location when you save it. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. Uh, if you're creating an account, this is where you'd click um, sign in here. On your Tinkercad homepage, you're gonna see this, this dashboard here. If you're having any trouble with the controls or with movement or anything, these tutorials are a great place to start. Uh, if you go to this learn link up at the top of the page here on this right hand side, click that and there are these starters are great for the controls. Uh, lessons have some really cool, I particularly love this chess pawn one, but they have some really cool ways that you can learn how to create all of these projects with some really easy to use self-guided tours. I'm going to click back to the dashboard so you can click this logo at any time to get back to your personal dashboard and I'm going to create a new project or a new design. So you see an auto-generated project title here. I'm going to click on this and call it bookmark because while that auto-created program or project title is great, it makes finding things really difficult later. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename that. Uh, Tinkercad does auto-save, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about saving as you go. You'll see a little notification occasionally that your project is being saved. So the first thing we're going to do is import that bookmark blank. So we're gonna click import over here on the right of the screen. Click on that, choose a file, oh, navigate to where you have saved your bookmark file, and then you will hit import. Sometimes it takes a minute, this should go pretty quickly, yeah. Uh, I'm sure many of you have gotten this style of bookmark at our outreach events, and this is what we'll be personalizing today. So if I click on here and hover over the corner, click the corners, you will see the dimensions. Um, this is about 20 millimeters wide and about 65 long with uh, 1.5 millimeters tall. 3D printing primarily uses millimeters to measure because it's much more precise than inches. One layer on our poly printer in the eye maker is about 0.2 millimeters thick. So it's about the same as a sheet of paper. Now I'm going to come over to the shapes panel here on the right and look for the shape I want for the top of my bookmark. There is a drop down menu here. You can see more options. The shape generators, this, if you hit all here, that has some really awesome shapes. Um, but today I'm going to stick with a basic shape. So generally for a bookmark, you'll want something kind of flat and one dimensional. So I'm not going to put a cone on the end of my bookmark. I am going to use a star today. So I'll click and then click over here on the work plane and my star is placed. 
And actually, I'm going to rotate it a little bit. You can choose which axis upon which to rotate this by clicking these different rotate handles. I'm going to click the bottom one here, and you're going to rotate there. Uh, a neat trick here is if you pull your mouse outside of this little circle, you will be able to move by one degree at a time. But if you keep your mouse inside the circle, it will snap to each of these points. So I'm going to do this 22.5 because that makes it straight up and down. So next I'm going to scale it. An important note is that when we scale things, it's important to grab this corner handle and hold down your shift key on your keyboard. The shift key keeps it proportional so we don't end up with a squished star. The keyboard, this keyboard shortcut works in almost every graphic design program, so it's very handy to know how to do it. So what we're gonna do, oops, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna click first, press shift, scale it, let go of the mouse, let go of shift. It's actually a little big, so I'm going to either click this button up here to undo, or you can press Control Z, which undid it a second time, but Control Z is, or Command Z if you're using a Mac, is a keyboard shortcut that works in virtually every computing program or text field where you're entering things. This is a really good one to know just for all of computing. Control Z is undo. So now we are scaled proportionally and it's scaled proportionally among each of the three directions. So it's too thick to really use this as a bookmark. I'm gonna grab this little square handle that's on top here, and I'm not going to hold shift this time since I'm only gonna change the height. Again, you can click and drag to change the height here, or you can click on the number here, which is the measurement in millimeters. See how the number is highlighted blue? I can just start typing over that. And I'll type 1.5 and hit enter so that this shape is exactly the same thickness as this shape. Uh, I find it much, much easier to change the size of things by typing. You can do that in the corners too, but I'm not going to because I don't want to mess up the proportions. But in general, typing allows you to be much more precise. It's much easier than trying to click and drag. So now I'm going to line my two, oops, I'm going to press Control Z again. I'm going to line up my two shapes. So I want the star to be completely touching on this. I don't want to I don't want a hole there to create a weak spot. Um, there are a couple ways to line your shapes up. You can click and drag with your mouse button or you can nudge it with your arrow keys. Each time you press the arrow key it will move by one millimeter. So that's a good way to get it really precise. I like to click and drag to get it where I want it then I use the arrow keys till I get it until I like the placement better. Uh, you don't have to worry about getting exactly centered because there is a tool for that. So I'm going to either, I can click and drag, see that red square, click and drag, and that selected two shapes, which I can tell because my shapes menu over here says two, or I can click one shape, press shift, click the other shape, let go of shift. Again, you can see I have two shapes selected. If I have more than one shape selected, the align tool is activated. So I'm going to click there and my align tool handles have popped up. You'll see these little dots and they also are grayed out right here because they're the exact same size and they're already lined up perfectly in that direction. Um, in order to move your work plane like this, I have been right clicking on the work plane and then dragging the mouse to get it where I wanna go. You can also use this little um, navigation cube over here. I find it easier to click and drag. Sometimes I want a funny angle. The tutorials under the Learn tab will have a much more in-depth uh, guide to that. So the nice thing about our Align tool is we can use these to kind of preview what we're going to do. See, if I click here, you'll see little outlines of what would happen if I pushed that. So I'm going to use the center one, and you can see it's going to adjust a little, but because that star is still rotated a little funny, it is not lining up exactly the way I want it. 
gonna have to eyeball that. It's perfectly centered in this direction, but I don't want to center it this direction because that would look strange. So I'm just gonna use my judgment on where to place it on top of the bookmark. Again, I didn't want to leave scroll wheel zooms, by the way. I did not want to leave a gap here to make a weak point. Uh, you can, oh, one more thing, select both again. And another way you can do that, and this is another keyboard shortcut that works in a lot of programs, Control or Command plus the A key. Press those both, you will select everything on your work plane. That's really handy when you don't want to use shift click for everything or the drag box isn't getting you quite as precise as you want. And I'm going to click this group button up here. This is again only activated when you have more than one item selected. So you'll see two shapes selected, we can use group. One shape selected, group and align are all grayed out. Once I've grouped it, you will know it's good because it will all turn the same color. And if you've lined everything up really well, you will not see a line where they changed originally. That means that that is going to be a smooth surface. If we would like to add a little bit of dimension to it, we can ungroup this, raise this up maybe two millimeters, so it's about half a millimeter taller. And if we group them again, you'll see there's a line there. So that actually, I think this looks a little nicer in this case, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. You definitely don't want your bookmark to be any taller than three millimeters on the top part. Uh, this bottom part, we're gonna leave this at the 1.5 because that is a good size for fitting between the pages but not being so flexible that it will break. Um, you can add text if you would like. Over here, there is a text option. So if you do this, make sure that all of your text is touching the inside of your base shape. So I'm going to type read on here. I'm gonna go ahead and change my font there because I like this one better. Shift click to maintain my proportions. And then I can use my align button here line that up. So it's important to make sure that all of the text is on top of the star shape or whichever shape you choose. And then I'm going to shrink this down to three millimeters. So that'll end up being a total of three. So it's going to be one millimeter taller than the star. We generally do not recommend making text smaller than one millimeter because our printer, um, while it's very precise, details that are smaller than one millimeter can get lost sometimes. So because this is three millimeters tall total and it's on top of a star that is two millimeters tall, we have one millimeter that should be above the star. So again, I can select everything and group. This is where you can either end here if you'd like or you can keep on playing with it. Um, if you wanna change the color, I do have a quick note about that. You can change the color of any object just by clicking this solid tab here and you can pick this. If you click multicolor, be aware our printer can only print one color. So you can look at it in multicolor on the screen if you want, but when we, the color selector here only changes the color you're viewing in Tinkercad. This color information, it doesn't save once you export your file. And the actual color of your print depends on what color filament we load into the 3D printer. And we only have the ability to print one color per object. So expect to choose that final color based on filament availability at the branch and expect your bookmark will be one color. Uh, one last thing to export your bookmark, simply select the shape here and click export. From here, you definitely need to choose STL file and it will automatically save to your default download location. And click show in folder if you're not sure where that is. Now that you're finished, you can print this at any of our libraries at HCPL. If you have not taken the orientation yet, all you'll have to do is attend one of our free 3D printing orientations. You can take it at any HCPL location that offers it. And after that, you will be able to schedule time to come in and print your bookmark at any of the locations that have a 3D printer. Use of the printer is always free. However, we do charge 10 cents per gram of filament just to recoup that materials cost so we can keep providing filament. 
Um, check out our events calendar at hcpl.net to find an orientation once we resume programming. If you have taken the orientation already, you'll be able to schedule an appointment when the Maker Labs are reopened. So thanks for watching. See you next time.